welcome to our service brought to you today from Stratton St. Margaret's. A few notices before we begin. Firstly, in uh, Stanton and South Marston in the porch, there will be some little cards with ash crosses on. And if you're unable to make it to St. Margaret's on the 17th of February, which is Ash Wednesday, you can pick up one of those cards and it has an ash cross, which you can then take home and you can pray the prayer. As we're unable to gather together to um, ash our foreheads as we would normally do. At St. Margaret's here, we will be open for some of the time during that Wednesday. So you can come and you can collect a little stone, which also has an ash cross put on it. And you can remain in church for a short while to, uh, for some private prayer time, or you can just collect your little rock and then go again. So that's about Ash Wednesday. We're also going to be launching Lent Bible study and that will start on Wednesday the 17th of February in the evening and it's going to be on Zoom. So those little pre-coffee mornings have been a little bit of a trial for me to just see how it all works so that it can be a bit smoother for when we come to our Bible study. So there will be options for you to just let me know how you would prefer the um, group part of the Bible study to go forward. So we'll begin all together and we'll have some prayer and we'll read the, the readings that are necessary. But when we go come to the questions, we'll break into smaller groups. And I just need to know whether you would prefer to um, pick your buddies with which to go into those groups with or whether you're happy with a random selection for the first evening and then to remain in that group following on. So hopefully that will be explained to you and there will be then an, a poll that you can fill in either on Facebook or um, as a link to this service. So I'm hoping that makes sense. So watch this space for the studies. You will be sent the material when you sign up. You will then be sent the link. So you, just to make sure it's private, we get no gate crashes and all of that kind of thing. You will be sent the Bible study material and you will then get the Zoom link as well, which will go for the whole of those weeks that we are going to be studying together. So I think that's it. And we'll begin our service after a short moment of quiet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God in Christ has revealed his glory. Come, let us worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The Lord's name is greatly to be praised. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord. O oh, praise the name of the Lord.
and upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify us as his own. Let us confess our sins. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our collect for today. Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person that we may mirror your likeness. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? The Lord brought me forth as the first of his works, before his deeds of old. I was formed long ages ago, at the very beginning, when the world came to be. When there were no watery depths, I was given birth. When there were no springs overflowing with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth, before he made the world or its fields, or any of the dust of the earth. I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was constantly at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in the human race. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are you, God our Father, through your Son, the Christ. His name is Jesus. God is with us. Praise the Lord. Jesus came and shared our life. God is with us. Praise the Lord. Jesus' touch made people whole. God is with us. Praise the Lord. Jesus raised the dead to life. God is with us. Praise the Lord. Jesus died to set us free. God is with us. Praise the Lord. Jesus rose to life again. God is with us. Praise the Lord. Jesus is our King on high. God is with us. Praise the Lord.
In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. Through him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without him. The Word was the source of life, and this life brought light to humanity. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell people about the light, so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light. He came to tell about the light. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on everyone. The word was in the world, and though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him, so he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as the children of a human father. God himself was their father. The word became a human being and, full of grace and truth, lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the father's only son. This is the word of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The days are getting longer. Bit by bit, minute by minute, we're getting just a bit more sunlight each day. I go out for a run in the morning, quite early in the morning, and I'm noticing this now as... Uh, I go out roughly the same time, but just over the last few days, I've gone out and it's just starting to approach dawn. And by the time I'm kind of halfway through or probably towards the end of my run, I see the sun rising. I can see things now which I, I didn't see before. Uh, paths that I was running along uh, in darkness, I can now see where I'm going. I can see people coming towards me and they can see me. I went for a run this morning and it was, uh, it, was, uh, it was beautiful. I was starting to see more and more of creation and being able to hear things and see things made all the difference. It was a lovely time of the day to be out. The light certainly helps us to see the beauty of things. Light helps us to find things in times of darkness, helps to find us to find our way when we're lost. Maybe it helps us to see the presence of someone else or enables someone else to see our presence. Light is important and light is indeed good. Or maybe we like the dark. Maybe it hides things we wouldn't want to show to others or or wouldn't want others to see, or things we wouldn't want to see ourselves. Today's reading reminds us, or today's readings, remind us not only of the beauty of creation, not only of God as our creator, but it also reminds us that Jesus, the source of that creation, the source of all things, is also the light of the world the source of life and a light which can never be put out. Jesus, light of the world. Everything Jesus did, everything Jesus said, pointed people towards God. Jesus came to earth. Jesus, the creator of the earth. There in the very beginning of the Bible, there at the very beginning of time. He came to earth to shine a light towards God, to shine a light towards the love of God. There were those who were in darkness, those who were struggling to see, those who felt abandoned on, the, on their own, those who felt outcast and worthless. But they were being told, they were being shown through this light that there was a God who was there, and more to the point of God who loved them. 
Jesus came to show people, people of the time, that God loved them, that God was still around and that he would make all things better. There were those, the religious of their time, who had a bit of habit of keeping God to themselves and not really sharing God. Rules and regulations, some just too hard to follow. Some didn't even bother trying. Jesus brought it down to love. He came to share God, to shine God's light and to share that love, to offer us uh, to them and us a way back to him. There are those today who may be living in darkness, those who might feel worthless, those who might feel that they're outcast, those who will be looking for God. The message remains the same for them today. We are called to be lights to the world reflecting Christ in the way that we live our lives, reflecting Christ's light that we have been given, that hope we have set before us through the death and resurrection of our Saviour. We are told not to keep God to ourselves, but to be a blessing to others. We are called to share him. I don't know if you know the song, This Little Light of Mine, I'm going to let it shine. Sing it to yourself now if you do know it. I'm not going to sing it, but uh, please do sing it to yourself. That is all about knowing that we have a light and we need to shine it. We have a hope. And never before has that hope been more in need than today. Of course, it isn't always easy. And sometimes it can be a challenge. But sometimes by doing the ordinary things, we can help shine Christ's light to others who may be living in the shadows. Again, never before has this been more important. By doing the ordinary things, by showing people our love and God's love, we might be shining God's light into those shadows. I think one thing that's been evident through this pandemic, through the actions of people in our communities, is that the world is full of light. But also we do have darkness and despair. By trying to be more like Jesus and ready to love our neighbours as ourselves, we can be like Christ and show people light. To love one another, love God, and love one another and to show people God's love to be his hands and his feet to show them that God loves them even if they've forgotten about him or even if they don't know he exists each one of us will have our own situations our own talents and gifts which we can use to shine God's light let's shine that light that light that shines love, that sh light that shines care into darkness. As the song goes, what the world needs now is indeed love, sweet love. But more particularly, that lasting solid love of God, the eternal hope that it offers, even in the darkest situation, even in the darkness that we face at the moment. One day, we will come out of this. And I think this reading from John is an uplifting passage to remind us that there is always hope. The whole Bible points towards that hope we have set before us. So the challenge set before us all today is how are we going to shine that light just like the sun is shining on my face at the moment? How are we going to shine God's light in the world around us to bring others hope to bring others warmth but to show others that God is still around God cares God values each and every one of us Amen
Let us affirm our faith using the words of the Creed. We, we believe, believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our response today, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. God of justice and peace, we pray today for the ongoing situation in Myanmar, following the successful military coup d'etat this week. May the two sides follow your example, and begin talks to try and resolve the ongoing issues, and hope that they may find a compromise that will allow hostilities to cease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, the unpredictable weather has not only affected this country, but many countries across the world. Today in our prayers, help us to remember the people of Australia who have experienced a large bushfire this week, causing at least 81 buildings and many emergency vehicles to be destroyed. We pray that you will intervene and bring the rain that they so desperately need so that it can be brought under control. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for all those who are seeking to make a difference and bring a halt to climate change. We pray especially for Denmark, who are seeking to build a giant island to provide energy for three million households. We must remember that we are only the caretakers of your world, and that we must all work together to tip the balance back towards safety for our natural world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Covid-19 has taken so much from us over this past year, but there is a small light at the end of the tunnel with the vaccination programme continuing to gather pace. We pray today for all those involved in, di in distributing the vaccine, to not only our most vulnerable people, but also to our frontline workers, doctors, nurses and care home staff. They are a credit to the NHS and to their families, and we thank them for the huge difference they have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of faith and love, we give thanks today for our ministry team, Elvin, Mark, Lisa, Alison and Dan. During this past year, there has not been a lot of good news, and it's easy for the grind of day-to-day -day life to become motivation, but for a desire to please others. We pray that our church leaders will remain grounded and remind us to look after ourselves as well as others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, we pause to remember all those who have lost loved ones, we pray today for all those who have died due to COVID-19 and their loved ones who are going through immeasurable grief at this time. We remember especially this week the family of Captain Sir Tom Moore, the man who brought hope to a nation struggling to come to terms with a new normal. In a moment of silence, we also remember those close to us who need our love, support and prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray using the words our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. to see the work you have set before us today. Take us and use us to bring to others the new life you give in Jesus Christ our Lord. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love, today and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to Him in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear. We do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations?